but the communication could have been something along the lines of WHY ARE YOU OUT OF THE NET?! Quack 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 Mr. Duxworth! Hello friend, Charlie Con- uh, Steve Dangle here, and welcome to the best day of the week, Thursday, because this is another episode of Steve's Dangits, where we take a look at the biggest dangits from around the NHL. Starting with Gunnar Stahl for going glove in the shoot at- we- we can't- we can't do that? We don't own the footage, we don't own the footage. Well here, how about we start with something else? It's an epidemic! Not, well I guess, I guess you gotta be careful saying that, like not a real one. Like I don't think we're gonna miss any games, you might get healthy scratch for it, but no one's gonna miss any games. Think of the last time you saw a player throw the puck, like I'm talking close their hand and throw the puck. It's rare, right? It doesn't happen very often. Except this past week it happened THREE TIMES! Let's start with John Gibson. Now the Anaheim Ducks have a power play in overtime against the Minnesota Wild. The Wild tied it late, it's a great game, a wild game even. And with 10 seconds left not wanting to have a D-zone draw, John Gibson does this. Baller two on two short-handed, Spurgeon moving in, fires, saved by Gibson. Gibson tried to throw it ahead to keep it moving. He does. Ten seconds left. But we're going to get a penalty there against Gibson. Well, at least a hand pass whistled against the Ducks, and the faceoff will come back. You know what? When I saw that, I was like, John Gibson, you can't do that. You know you can't do that. And then I watched footage from the World Cup and it's nothing but goalies doing that. And I thought, wait a sec, why can't he do that? Now this is coming from Mr. If you're a goaltender, tend the goal himself. Always police and what goalies can and can't do. Goalies should be able to do this. Because here's the thing, sometimes they will help their team. Sometimes they'll set up a breakaway and it could win a series in the playoffs. But let's be honest, most of the time it's going to involve the puck catching on some part of the glove and them scoring on themselves. And that's funny to me and it's better for the content. So I say let them go. Of course what happened after that? Nothing happens in the overtime the game goes to a shootout. Trevor Zegras and Kirill Kaprizov went dual amazing shootout moves, but in the end, Minnesota would win. John, what you doing, man? That's a dang. Now, that is, that's once a season. You'll never see a player throw the puck again, except for later that day, the captain of the Habs did it, Nick Suzuki. Over to Hyman, ran in, and then Suzuki threw it. Did he get away with it? No. Well, it's going to be a penalty against Montreal. But it will be Suzuki going to the box. You mentioned the one earlier that didn't get called this one here. Just too long in the glove, and he throws it over top of Nugent Hopkins, who is coming into the picture to try and pick it off. And that little hesitation and hold is where he gets dinged. Why? It's not just that he closed his hand on the puck and threw the thing. It's that they were on the penalty kill when they did it. So now you're down to five on three. <laughs> I just watched it again. <laughs> ah, it was funny in my memory. It's funnier rewatching it. Because he like stealthy, he like tries to get away with it. This guy's like, <laughs> <laughs> Nick, no! This dude tried to ditch a puck in an NHL game like me trying to hide pogs from a teacher who's like, are you hiding pogs? No. Mr. Glenn, you know those aren't allowed in the schoolyard. You're not gonna believe this, but the Oilers scored and yeah. That's a dang it. Now these two happening on the same day is why it was surprising to me that when a few days later Leaf fans were so surprised that Justin Hall did the same thing! I saw way too many people like, who does that? And I'm sitting there like, glad you asked! Nick Suzuki and John Gibson! Literally less than a week ago. Except this one? No, this one's visually the most funny because there's a wind up. Under two minutes left here in the second, Leafs. Trying to take a three goal lead to the dressing room. Hall first clear, and now he grabs the puck. And it's almost a reaction. What, look at it, he grabbed it and looked at it for a second, like, oh no, what do I do with it? And I just. Okay, hear me out. The Blue Jays missed out on a lot of guys this offseason. No, no, you're right. Right handed, though. You're right. This one, <laughs> that's just, that's not a player doing it on purpose. I don't, I don't. Listen, there are times in our lives where your instincts, like your primal instincts just take over your body and like listen he's in danger like the joe pavelski's there there's a bunch of dallas stars that's scary and his fight or flight kicked in and the puck took flight and that also put his team down five on three and the difference between this and the nick suzuki one is it led to a ridiculous five on three kill in which mitch marner's stick broke so it was two and a half on five so 
Happy to clear this up because there was quite a kerfuffle this past week. Don't throw the puck! All right, now that that's all cleared up, all three of those are dangits. Now, for our next dangit, a lot of you tweeted this at me saying, if you're a goaltender, tend the goal. And I'm, I'm gonna say no. Not no, that, no, you should tend the goal. But we can't just overuse it. You can't just scream that whenever you want it. It's gotta be the goalie's fault. And I'm here to defend Elvis Merzlikens. This is not his fault. The Columbus Blue Jackets trying to win a game, which no, not really though, are they? I want a camera on the manager's box in Columbus. You know they got the Regina Pats game on, come on. But the Blue Jackets are down late in a game and they're trying to win the thing and they go to pull their goalie. Here's the thing, sometimes you pull the goalie at the wrong time. This isn't even that though. Sometimes you pull the goalie at the wrong time and sometimes you have the puck, which is when you're supposed to pull the goalie, you have the puck in the offensive zone and then you give it away. But it does lead to hilarious results. Still no signal, there it is now. Oh, now the bench. And he's got to dive back and it sails through, wide. Through, oh, stick. Bluger, he scores! Teddy Bluger gets the last laugh. And Merzlikens is hurt, baby. No, he's just embarrassed. And yet, when you have the face off there, it would have gave Line A something else. Now he gets out of the net. Brian Rush missed that net. He throws his stick. Can't throw your stick anyway. Could have had another penalty shot. Yep. And then he dives again. And Teddy Bluger, what a way to get his first of the season. He couldn't score against Merzlikens on the penalty shot in the second. He sneaks that one past him. And Merzlikens is hurt, baby. No, he's just embarrassed. Let me tell you something. I know video games aren't real life, but you do that on my EASHL team, you're getting kicked off. We have a blanket rule about that. You're not allowed to do it. Naturally, one guy still does it and we yell at him all the time. But this is what happened. And it's the worst because it's Bruce Leakins that ends up looking silly. But that giveaway, oh, that's a dang it. If you're a goaltender, rely on your teammates to make better passes, except if you can't rely on them to do that, then you're kind of screwed. That one doesn't fit on a shirt. For next dang it, this happened a week ago and I had to ask producer Nick. I'm like, hey, didn't we do this? And apparently we didn't because it happened the night the last dang it's video was released. Here's Jake Markstrom. Stop it. It's hockey on sports. Here's Monahan tipping through. Markstrom out the challenge. Loose puck. He scores! Following up is Slavkovsky after Markstrom came way out of the crease. He had an open net, puts it home, and the 18-year-old rookie makes it 1-0 Montreal just 13 seconds into the hockey game. All right, that's a strange start to say the least. Right off the opening faceoff, comes back right here to Gooley. Watch this nice pass right onto the tape. And all of a sudden, Sean Monaghan comes barreling through there, and Jacob Markstrom didn't think he could cover it with his glove. And he thought it's just best to sprawl out. You don't see that very often. And the puck goes right to Slikowski. And in Stop it. Just stop it. Dude, because this happened a week ago, I don't want to go in too hard on Jake Markstrom because he, after the game, said, I just suck at hockey right now. I can't tell you if he leads the league in, if you're a goaltender, 10 the goals over the last, I don't know, 12 months. He's certainly got to be up there, but he's definitely got to be among the league leaders in instances of, if you're a goaltender, 10 the goal in the first minute of the game. He did this in the playoffs with McDonald's it on the ice and this one against the Habs I I I dude if you're a Calgary Flame and you watch that happen you just know you're in for a long and not fun night now here's where I'm at because I'm trying to be fair to goalies and everything if you're a goaltender tend the goal okay it can't just be a blanket thing sometimes it's the right move to play the puck and we'll see um, another instance of that in this video this can just be a miscalculation and you got to make these things like split second it's really difficult let's watch it again what happens if Markstrom succeeds here and he strips the puck? Look where he ends up! The dude's at the blue line! Someone got a stats nerd on the phone. How many goalies have had a successful zone exit this season? Not by passing, by carrying. They just take the thing out themselves. Listen, I thought two things after I saw this. One, I'm getting Dan Vladar in fantasy, and I did, and it's gone pretty well. And two, I think if Jake Markstrom just stays in his net, He's probably one of the better goalies in the NHL, even currently playing poorly. Some goalies are good at handling the puck. Others do this. That's a dang it. And if you thought he had a week, let me introduce you to a pair 
from Carter Hart. Now this one, this one you're allowed to say with your whole chest. If you're a goaltender, tend the goal! Here, Derby turned it over as Smith was waiting for that, and they'll play it back in. Very cautious start to this third period, and the Flyers pay for it. They turn it over behind the net, and the Devils score. And Turning the puck over right there, Smith kept it forward. They go back into the zone quickly, and the Flyers don't sort it out. Carter Hart tries to bump the puck. Wood just cut off the boards, and Mercer's the recipient of a good bounce off the shin pads of Seal. Someone tell me whomst on the ice was being helped by that not including the New Jersey Devils. This one seems to me like it might have been a miscommunication. Hey, I want you to do that, but I'm already in the middle of doing this, something like that. But the communication could have been something along the lines of, WHY ARE YOU OUT OF THE NET?! And Carter Hart, like, there's another goalie, like, he's he's been better than could be expected of a goalie playing for the Flyers this year. I'm telling you right now, if you want to save money on a goalie coach, you hire me, I'm a fraction of the salary, and I'm also not good at anything that involves being on the ice. But I will go to the nearest store, buy about half a dozen bungee cords, and that'll do the job. You have no idea how quickly you will notice an improvement. They'll have enough slack to, to like challenge to like a, about the like the low slot, but if they try to go behind the net, not only are they not able to do it, but the slack generated from the bungee cords will pull out a booby trap rubber chicken that will come from behind the net, like where the water bottle is, and smack the goalie in the head. Like one of those loud rubber chickens too, so they know, ah! you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> one of those loud ones that you buy for your dog and then your dog plays with it and you're like, why did I buy this for my dog? Ah! This is my job. Anyway, if you're a goaltender, tend the goal for goodness sake. That's a dang it. And this next one from Carter Hart, um, you know, I don't know if this is his fault. I think this might just be one day the hockey gods just don't like you. They have had tremendous depth in the blue line, and not just depth players, star players back there. And in a sense, they did that here tonight. They moved them from the second pair up to the first. Carter Hart lets that one slip in. Dumped in from center ice. It finds its way through, and it's 4-0 Tampa Bay. And Ian Cole doesn't even really celebrate. You can see the dump in there. Did it it just goes off the boards, and as Carter tries to get back, see it roll up though, it bounces and hits the pad part just above the skate. Yeah, you see? Like, I can definitely see Carter Hart looking up and go, hockey gods, why have you forsaken me? And they look down and they're just like, for the lols! Like, I don't know, what's, what's he supposed to do? Practice that? Okay, so on this drill, we're gonna replicate them dumping it in and having it bounce off the boards perfectly, and you just jam yourself up against the post and try not to knock it in yourself. Sorry, Carter, but that's not just a dang it, it is a creepy and eerie one. Because here is Carter Hart against the Lightning, no goals on the board for the Flyers, doing almost the exact same thing on December 6th, 2021. They got it past Atkinson. Joseph first toward the puck. So out comes Hartman. He plays it right to Joseph, who's shot, winds up in the net. They score. And to get back in the net, and Joseph has the fifth goal for the Lightning here. There it is off the body, just quickly spins and taps it back towards the net. And Joseph, good effort up the ice here. Backs away, takes that puck, and then just chips it. The truth is out there, and that is a dang it. For our next dang it, the New Jersey Devils, you know, for the first few years of these dang it's videos, the Devils were a mainstay. Their favorite thing was scoring on their own net. They loved it more than Christmas. But this year, they went and ruined it by, you know, being good. But on this play, they really get back to their roots. So much about possession here, three on three, but Nashville gives the possession away, and it comes to Vanacek. And to flip it in the corner, Duchesne trying to jab at it. A little bit sloppy here to start this three on three. Great chance for Johansson, and he makes the Devils pay for the turnover. Nashville Predators. But again, I said it wasn't going to be always smooth sailing. Let's look at that goal again. Sharon Govich is taken out by Duchesne, so he does all the work, the dirty work, to find that loose puck. Devils just couldn't corral it. He gets it right out in front to Johansson, and he rips it far side to give Nashville the secondary point in overtime and on to the next one i know the devils are going to be disappointed in their room but they pick up a point and you gotta what were you trying to do you know what 
You can say that this is if you're a goaltender 10, the goal from Vitek Vanacek, and no, it is absolutely not. I will defend him to, to the hilt, which is a saying that I hear all the time, and I don't know what a hilt is. I'm gonna Google it because it's the future. Hilt, the handle of a weapon or tool, especially a sword, dagger, or knife. I don't get it, and I'm starting to think I might be using the phrase wrong. Anyway, Vitek Vanacek didn't do anything wrong here because his teammates made a weird pass. Like, like if they were playing Twister and had to pass the puck at the same time, they would have made this pass. So he leaves the net and he's like, how about I calm this situation down a little bit? And yes, he does throw it into the boards, but also he throws it into a three-on-one puck battle for his teammates that they should definitely win 10 times out of 10. What happens? They don't! And what happens, it ends up screwing up his goalie statistics and that doesn't seem very fair now, does it? New Jersey Devil's very rare these days, but that's a dang it. For next dang it, this is something I've always wondered, like how doesn't it happen more often? I'm convinced defenders in the NHL have eyes on the back of their head because they'll be going full speed, like as fast as any human can go backwards on skates, trying to defend against the other team. And then they'll stop just short of running into their own goalie. Except on this particular occasion, Nick Chichek runs into his own goalie, Aaron Dell. Here's Benino, sends it up ahead. Cummins rink wide pass, picked off. Sabres will counter. Skinner with Tuck going to the net. Skinner holds it, scores! Once again, just a nice poke check right there, puts his puck up and coming with speed. Skinner cuts in right here. He got the D going back, 59, runs right into Dell, takes him out of the play here, which opens up the door for Jeff Skinner just to hang on to this puck. Plus 59, the D coming back as Skinner comes across, down he goes, he takes Dell out. The reaction made me giggle, I'm not gonna lie. Listen, Aaron Dell's wearing a mask. He might have been saying a whole lot under there. I don't think he was. But the whole body language just sitting there said, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. And also, I'm extremely mad! And you know what? Uh, he's, he's kind of right. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how that doesn't happen all the time. That's a dang it. For our next dang it, is Sidney Crosby bad at hockey? I mean, you have to ask the question. Good luck. Oh. Whiff, whiff. Sid, a couple of times. And then Jake oh couldn't get it around God. the goalpost. You don't see Sid missing a lot of those. There's one, there's two, and the puck gets to the goal line. Jake just doesn't have the angle. Oh, and then another opportunity R for Raquel, Raquel. he can yeah. pickle stab it in. <laughs> now, before I showed you that clip, I, I'm kidding, of course. Sidney Crosby is obviously incredible at hockey. I mean, I mean, he's so incredible that if you have the opportunity to pick him up in fantasy hockey, you, you definitely should. I mean, that's, that's the sort of thing I would do. I, I mean, that's the sort of thing I did do. So when I happened to see this play and saw that he had not one but two cracks at it and didn't score, all I could think was, ah! <laughs> So anyway, I lost last week. Again, I'm in an eight person pool. Third out of eight in total points. My record is two and six and I'm sick of it! Sydney! You know what, the, the dang it's on me. The dang it is on, I'm, I'm very upset. We're down to our final two. I could not believe this happened. This is rare because I'm a night owl. I stay up for basically every game every night and it's having an effect. But when I saw that the Montreal Canadiens had a four nothing lead on the Vancouver Canucks in Vancouver, I thought, okay, there's gonna be changes in Vancouver tomorrow. I don't know what it's gonna be, but it's gotta be something you can't get embarrassed at home like this. And what followed is a ridiculous comeback followed by a back and forth duel, followed by the Canucks winning in overtime. Puck to the side, Hughes hustles after it, Caulfield as well, Canadians come up with it, get it back to Matheson. Pedersen knocked him down, just gonna get away with it too, Pedersen attacking from the side, he scores! Oh man, no. Okay, both teams have some a beef now. Yeah, they have a beef. Marty St. Louis goes right to the dressing room. Here's Pedersen. Looks like he's gonna go all the way across and then just quick hands. And Montembeau is beaten. There's Matheson gets knocked down, and you're right, the Canadians have a beef. No call from the referees. Here's Matheson and C. Pedersen. Oh, boy, that wasn't, uh, it wasn't in the skates. It was more on the knee. All right, let's play a game called What's the Dang It Here? What is the dang it? Is it Montreal blowing a 4-0 lead? 
Yeah. Or is it the missed call in overtime? And I want to know what the comment section thinks. Is this a trip from Elias Pettersson on Mike Matheson? There's Matheson gets knocked down, and you're right. The Canadians have a beef. No call from the referees. There's Matheson and see Pettersson. Oh, boy, that wasn't, uh, it wasn't in the skates. It was more on the knee. I'm not going to lie. I don't think it is. I mean, watching it on the broadcast camera at full speed the first time, you could definitely think it is. But if you watch it in slow motion on the close-up cam, I think Matheson was in the middle of blowing a tire when Pedersen's stick made contact with his leg. And also, you know how I know it's not a penalty? Look at Matheson's reaction. Nothing. Not a thing. Dude, pretend like he tripped you. Try to win the game. Now I know what you're saying. Steve, isn't that cheating? Steve, isn't that poor sportsmanship? Brad Marchand has a Stanley Cup ring and Corey Perry's been to three straight Stanley Cup finals. I don't want to hear anything about sportsmanship. But no, seriously, that's, uh, it's not a trip and... You should be able to defend a fort of the lead, said the Leafs fan, said the entire comment section. And yeah, I mean, I cheer for a team notorious for blowing leads. And the reason I get upset is they should defend them. And they often haven't. Oh dear though, oh dear, that's a dang it. And now, ah, the main attraction. Where would we be without Jordan Bennington? Let me just say, as someone who grew up watching professional wrestling in the 90s, this is a textbook clothesline. First, he's got 10 in nine career games oh. against the Blues, and look out. He got clipped pretty hard there yeah, by nobody, Bennington. Nobody saw it. Jason saw So now down. they do, now they are pointing at the goaltender, Bennington. The referee looked around and, and as if he didn't notice anything. Now I think he's been tipped off, maybe by the linesman, that he's gonna have to make a call here. The net. And it was just a little bit of the glove hand, and Bennington's been known to uh, show a lot of contract, uh, contact. Excuse me. Let's see what happened to Jordan Stahl and Bennington in the last game. Are you serious? Dude, didn't we just talk to you, Jordan? Previously, Jordan Bennington tried to hit Jordan Stahl, and it's never good when you're not even the biggest Jordan in a collision. There's a listed difference of 48 pounds there, and Bennington is not on the high end of that 48. But like, if you can get in a guy's way and you can create something for your team, that's one thing. This is dirty. This is dangerous what Jordan Bennington does to Jason Zucker, who has not played a ton of hockey over the last few years because he keeps getting injured. And he could have really gotten hurt here. It was just a little bit of the glove hand and Bennington spin And can I just state the obvious that never really seems to get brought up when Bennington does this stuff? He usually does this in games the Blues are losing. Like I'm talking about games the Blues are losing because he hasn't been very good. So he has like a tantrum and like, it's, it's fine. Like hockey players, professional athletes, whatever. You get fiery, you have that competitive spirit, fine. Fine until you punch a player skating full speed in the face. And then he gets pulled, and then he takes a penalty chirping at the Penguins' bench. What could he possibly be saying to these guys, by the way? And then Thomas Grice has to come into the game, and then this happens. Here, takes Let's... the helmet off. Look at this. Got the mullet going. This is old time, old time hockey, Bobby. This is old school. Right oh, here. This guy. <laughs> Somebody must have said something. Well, I want to see what happened to Grice. I miss Grice going he down a... in there. Not the most graceful entry to a game. Well, he came in nice and cool and calm, and let's take a look what happened. Caught Grace. an edge. See ya. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Got, I got a laugh. <laughs> I was kind of funny. He brought me the first one to laugh. Yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Just got hit right in the mass. That's brutal. Is he okay after that? After this game, Craig Berube basically said, you know, just stop the puck. He said a different version of if you're a goaltender. 10 the goal. And Bennington struggles were one thing when you have Viliuso backing you up and he ends up getting pretty good and playing a lot of good games for you and signing a big contract with the Detroit Red Wings where he's been pretty good. But now you got Thomas Grice, who is very obviously the backup and Bennington is supposed to be the guy. But let me tell you something about St. Louis Blues head coach Craig Berube. He played 1,054 games in the NHL. In those 1,054 games, he only had 159 points. 
He was a forward, by the way. So how is his bread buttered in the NHL, might you ask? You guessed it. 3,149 penalty minutes. He was not afraid of the rough stuff. He was not afraid of fighting. It's one thing if you're sticking up for your teammates. And I don't think the St. Louis Blues are the type of team that would hesitate at all to stick up for their teammates. They got some they got some big guys in that team, tough guys. But if the Blues have to fight for Jordan Binnington, they're not sticking up for Jordan Binnington. They're enabling him. It's one thing if players are crashing into Binnington all the time and they gotta say, you know, the blue paint is our paint and you don't touch our goalie and they try to make the front of their net as unpleasant a place to be as possible. That's one thing. But when your goalie is repeatedly, you know, letting in a four spot and then backhand clotheslining guys in the face and then getting a misconduct penalty for chirping at the bench. It's not me sticking up for you and defending you. It's me getting dragged into a fight in situations where you are 100% dead in the wrong. And maybe they put up with that. Maybe they put up with that if it's 2019 and they're never losing a game and they're going all the way to the Stanley Cup and winning the thing. Except it's 2022 and in 20 games he has an 889 save percentage. You might tolerate that if you're winning almost every game. They're not. And I think everyone thinks this is going to involve like some big blow up. Like Bennington ends up actually fighting someone or like the Blues don't come to his defense. But the way things are going... The way this is going to end is he's just going to lose his job because like Craig Berube said, if you're a goaltender, just stop the puck. That's your job. The goalie who stops the most pucks stays in the net. That's all it is. Counter argument. It's way better for these videos. I, I don't know. Keep it up as long as you don't hurt anybody. Dude, he's a ridiculous guy. Uh, one of the most fascinating goalies in the league. One of the most fascinating players in the league because... Almost every game he gets out there and I can't believe what he's doing. And dude, did you see the playoffs last year? He's capable of so much better. He's so confusing. Anyway, what do you think? Leave a comment in the comment box down below. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends, don't throw the puck. They, they should be, goalies should be allowed. But just, just don't, until they allow it, don't.